Yo, Joes, and greetings, agents of Cobra Command. My name is Steve, this is G.I. Joburg, and in 323, we're going to be bidding farewell to our good friend and stalwart of the G.I. Joe community, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. We're also going to be talking about the issue four of Cobra Commander, and many, many other things. There are quite a few talking points in this episode. The demo for Wrath of Cobra has been dropped, and some of us have played it this weekend. Uh, but I'm um, not alone in my quest to talk about all things G.I. Joe. Joining me in studio is Paul. Hello, Paul. Hey, how's it, Steve? Hey. How's it, of course? Hey, everybody. And Rob. joining us. Yeah. Yo, hello everybody. Welcome. Good evening. Good morning. Whatever time of day it is for you. Hello. <laughs> and we are live, actually. Oh my so god. We have members of the chat fil filtering in as we speak. Guys, grab a seat. Strap Filtered. in. We're uh, we're gonna have some fun. It's Spoon Killer and Brick Fiction. I see what happened there. Kiwi yeah. Tiago Customs. Hello, Campbell. Uh, Danny of our time. Carbonite. Dross is here. Uh, Alan Grant, good morning, Australia. My goodness. Hello, hello, hello. Emmanuel in France, where it's late. Stuck in uh, surveillance port. And <laughs> Christoph, there's some duplications happening here. Um, yeah. But I, Eric I Gordlich also loves our video on Facebook. Yes. Welcome, Eric. Aaron Cobb. Good morning, Darren. Darren, and Darren. Yes, Good morning, Philippines. Aww. Rob is with us. It's I am. very early for you, sir. Matt Edwards, everyone's filtering. Hello, everyone, and hello to every listener and viewer in the future. Guys, let's kick things off with the somber notes. Um, Hooded Cobra Commander, after more than 10 oh. years of sterling service, has decided to hang up his clogs, retire from active service, no longer producing videos actively, and no longer... I suppose, taking part in the community, though that remains to be seen. Cobra Convergence 8 is still up in the air as to what's going to happen there. Um, we know what we're doing for Cobra Convergence 8 or the vacuum left by Cobra Convergence 8. We'll get Ooh. into that later. But right now, let's talk about the man. Um, Brian Lower, friend of ours, but also just a pillar of knowledge and reviews. That is a numbers guy. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Paul, man. You've nominated yourself to, to have the I'm opening. I'm nominating game. myself. Okay. Well, I think it's like, I hate how this feels like a you googly, and I'm not a you googleizer. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Zoolander reference, if anybody cares. Um, HCC, I got to say, man, one of the coolest guys in the community. And that comes from actually having, like, you know, personal interactions with him, you know, as G.I. Joburg, as Paul. Um, I got to say that dude's always been, and Brian, if you're watching this, you have always been like really courteous to us, really awesome to us. Um, always friendly, always like real, which is really cool. And um, I mean, I remember when we were at uh, JoeCon, you know, just ch chilling with Brian, it was like, whoa. And then, you know, having done some shows with him and then all, all the silliness we've done for Cobra Convergence and when we've had to chat to him and stuff, yeah cool man he's a cool guy it's sad that the community is going to lose um somebody like brian because of the kind of content he would create and the way that he would bring us together but we are also not losing one of the most important things that he created and i think that's important is that even though brian is stopping hcc you know is stopping being a youtuber he's set a foundation for other like-minded individuals to carry on a cool concept and that is cobra convergence i think i think whether it's yeah let's see what happens with that you know going forward and and just to clarify none of his content is going away he's yeah. not exactly. reaching the channel um hcc 788 will continue to exist as a resource um just not one that is actively producing content but if you look at his back catalog more often than not you'll find a review for whatever you're looking for he covered a lot, a lot, a lot. I'd Absolutely, say... a ton of toys. Like, mm. or I wouldn't say everything, but almost everything. Um, the most prominent so his wisdom on everything from that is the one thing that was on his sort of to do list. Um, those of you in the know would know that the lot he 
often amused uh, about the, the last figure that he bought as a child before um, setting aside G.I. Joe and moving on um, was Rock and Roll version 2, 1989. And he always held that, that would be his final review. Um, I guess there's just not enough gas in the tank to to complete that mission. So a lot of people are like left feeling like, oh, one, one, one last hurrah. But well, unless he's holding on to that because he, there is still hope inside him, you know, that he kind of comes back. I think, you know, you can love something, you can turn away from it, you can come back to it. Um, the man of, of incredible humor as well, um, especially those earlier one, earlier Kyobra convergences was convergences were like there were wonderful storylines that um, people got involved with um, and, and got involved in. And also like some of his earliest videos. Um, I was just going through his catalog of videos the other day and I found a really great one that I hadn't seen before, um, which was his rendition of I'll Be There For You by Bon Jovi, which is uh, Bon Jovi music. <laughs> and it's uh, He-Man Will Be There For You. So it's kind of like he man like rocking out to to Bon Jovi, and they kind of like you know they kind of is, is a cool send off. I think you know he will he was there for us HCC, and he will be there for us forever. His channel will be there, and hopefully we will see him again. Um, yeah, so great great humor, fantastic guy. It was really cool meeting him in in Chattanooga in in, in America, and and sitting with him around a table and just chatting GI Joe. It's definitely one of my favorite memories of of um, the you know our days in America. And um, the chats definitely agree. Um, lots of people sharing a lot of cool stuff um, about him. Apparently, Brian um, stays crunching milk, which is not an easy feat. In the least bit. Yeah, I love that comment. That's very cool. <laughs> Rob, I think you really tapped into something there because while everyone finds Hori Cobra Commander 788 for the review content, to, to hear very <laughs> reasoned and intellectual approaches to the toys that we all know and love. I think we all like his humor really infiltrated and found a place in all of us. Like at first you're like, hmm, he's doing sketches like comedy sketches before mm. launching into the review. And you're like, this is weird. This is not what I came here for. But before long, you're like, <laughs> this is fucking great. You're looking forward to them. You're like, okay, well, what's the next quirky thing going to happen next? Well, the, I mean, just off the top of my head, and I, I, I didn't want to kind of do a kind of a, a search through his back catalog. I wanted to see what bubbled to the surface. But I have long been a fan of the Skystorm X-Wing Chopper. And I'm reminded of the fact that, like, for a month, he did a special called Ugly Ass Figures. <laughs> 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 and yeah. one of them was, of course, Windmill, the pilot for the X-Wing. And I think Brian did a cosplay for each of these Ugly Ass Figures. And when it came turn for um windmill i mean it's it's too easy it's just high visibility uh orange shirt high visibility Lovely green scarf. pants and then he went one step further and wore um mickey mouse ears <laughs> because i had never put it together because I've, I've got you know blinkers on i'm seeing the cool chopper and i'm just accepting its pilot but absolutely he's got these little bobbles on his helmet exactly where mm. you would have these black <laughs> Mickey Mouse years. So Brian really tapped into something there. And, uh, very funny. Um, just to clarify, Brian's moving on because you know his heart's not in it anymore. Like as collectors, I'm sure we can all identify. There are times when we're like, "Yeah, I don't really be weighed down by the stuff anymore. I want, mm -hmm. I want my living room back and not have tote boxes everywhere." <laughs> that's very much the headspace that he's in, and that's the headspace that he's been in for a while. If you want mm. full explanations, look no further than his channel itself. Um, the mo most recent upload should still be his explanation of why he's walking away. And it's, as with all of the content on his channel, very well reasoned. I feel a lot of understanding for the guy. And beyond that, mm. I feel a kind of a happiness for him because anytime I felt like, ah, oh, this is such a hassle, it's pulling enjoyment away from the hobby, let me... Let me pack it in. Um, you know, there's a level of anxiety that rises thinking like, but 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 what if I want to come back to it? It'll be gone forever. Like I I'm sometimes I'm held in a kind of a terror about about mm. hanging up my clogs. It's not gonna happen. I've crossed that not crossed that bridge. I've I've come to the realization that there's no walking away from G.I. Joe Berg. This will be <laughs> part of my life forever. Um I, I'm not strong like Brian. 
But well, as as a someone, I mean, very happy for him for being able to set aside that burden and getting mm. on with his life. He's going to sell off a lot of his collection because, man, it is stifling. Like he has, he said in that video that it's just everywhere, and it's mm. encroaching on his personal space, and it's like it's an imposition now. He's not deriving any joy from all these toys, so. They really just clutter things up. Well, I think we've we've so, heard stories from other people before, yeah, where your collection just becomes a bit much. You know, you kind of step away from it, you do sell it off. Um, and it's it's not forever. I mean, people can come back to their collections, they can buy the toys again. Thankfully, a lot of vintage toys are out there um to get again if you ever does want to. And also, I mean, I think it I mean as someone who has kind of had a kind of, you know, kind of like up and down relationship with G.I. Joe and G.I. Joe book, I mean, you, I think, I'm sure people have noticed there have been times of me being around and being not around. I, I totally get it. I get it. Sometimes you you need to take a break or your head isn't in the space that you want to be in. Um, and it's completely understandable. Um, mm. But yeah, thankfully, I have, I have these two guys to, to draw me back in. Um, and hopefully, oh, I mean, he'll, you know, he'll keep up with... Um, you know he'll keep an eye on things um but yeah whatever he does i, I hope him the absolute best um, for whatever he does in in the future I something think... something i wanted to say and kind of want to add it adds to both what you said Stephen and rob um you know i think it's a very very healthy thing what hcc is doing or that hcc is doing like if you don't love something <laughs> and i'm not saying he doesn't love gi joe um there are degrees of enjoying something, you know, there's the passion for it, there's obsession, there's passive enjoyment, whatever. And then there is turning something that you love into, I don't want to call it a job, but uh, you start making yourself accountable with something that, you know, that you enjoy, like a hobby or whatever. And as somebody who's uh, essentially made a living or makes a living out of something I enjoy doing, aka drawing, um, I know how difficult it can be to sometimes have to do the thing, um, you know, where you have to you have to produce content, you have to produce results, and there's an artistic side of you that's just, oh, I'm drained, I'm done, I can't. And sadly, you know, when you when you're an illustrator, for example, or any kind of cre in any creative field, and I'm sure there's many of you guys in the chats listening and understanding this right now, um, but there there's a big difference between getting paid for doing something like you like drawing and whatever and then producing it on time for everybody and i gotta say there's a battery there's a battery in you and that can run dry and mm. i think there's That's a point where if the that fact that like he kept up the most insane tempo of work i mean from yeah. the meager amount of reviews that geo joburg has done to date mm -hmm. i mean I could not keep a, up a tempo of a, a review a week for you know, close to 10 years. He was incredible. Uh, he kept it up. Like, insane. I mean, it was part of his routine. You know, he kind of went to the yeah. office, he did his lawyery stuff, and then, you know, he kind of penciled in hours where in, you know, I'm sure in, you know, we kind of like filmed and, and got ready with the script and he did everything edited. Um, it consumed it's incredible amazing. personal time if you let it. Yeah. And Absolutely. I'm pretty sure there were weeks where he was up against a deadline and it was like crunch time. He was burning the midnight oil and working, so candle <laughs> at both ends, um, in order to ensure he met his Sunday deadline of a new review. Well, mm. Sunday for me, it was probably Saturday. I don't know. I forget when his reviews typically came out. Maybe it was Saturday for you in the States. Maybe it was Sunday. I don't know. I forget. But And yeah, that's why... Every I, week. I, that's... Whew. And that's why I think like, it's so important in that, uh, and why what he did was so good because he basically created a boundary for himself. And I think there's a lot that we, not just as like G.I. Joburg, YouTube creators, whatever, can learn from that, but all of us as like toy collectors and people who have passions can learn. Like if you feel that something that you're doing is not what you love doing anymore, but you keep doing it because you feel other people need you to do it, that's when the burnout happens. That's when the draining happens. And it's a good thing. It's a healthy thing for you to step away from that, to stop that. Now, thankfully, I have Steve and Rob. Um, and we, as G.I. Joe Book, we're a trio. So if, for example, I got to a point where I was feeling maybe a bit of burnout or something, I could say to the guys, hey, listen, do you guys mind if I take a month off or something just to like, just to breathe and just get myself back and, you know, fall in love with the toy again or something like that. And they'll be cool with that. You know, we've got each other for that. And, 
Brian didn't really have that. Who's going to do our unity. thumbnails? <laughs> <laughs> I'll still do the thumbnails. I know how to do just like, Photoshop. But the thing is, guys, is that uh, Brian did a lot of that by himself, which is admirable. Mm. Um, the way, the frequency that he did his content at is amazing. And it's something mm. to definitely learn from. Um, and also just a reminder that, you know, you have to love toys. You have to love what you're doing. Um, not you have to love. It's like, if you don't love doing something, maybe reevaluate it and figure out what do you love about what you're doing? How do you go forward? And if you can't, be honest with yourself, be honest with your viewers and say that. And I mm. respect that. And HTC, thank you for that video that you did, man, because it was cool to hear your 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 point of view on and all of that. And thank you. And also thank you for 10 years of great content and just for being a mensch, dude, like for being really cool. Like yeah. and many more, that. many more years of content. I mean, you can always go back to everything he's ever done and watch it again. It's and like thankfully, a one-stop shop for all things G.I. Joe, actually. Thankfully, in this case, we do know, you know, what's what, what Brian is, is doing next. Um, Matt put point out earlier. Unfortunately, we still don't know what happened to Form BX257. Um Sadly. Yeah. Unfortunately. But in this case, we know what Brian's up to. Um, we know he's well. He's making a move that's important to him, you know, mentally and for his own well-being. And um, all the best for the future. Yeah, yeah. Dick. Yeah, also cool that he was a bit of a coffin kitty as well. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever no. he used to show like old photos of himself in his youth, they're like, oh, he's such a god kid. <laughs> 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 and I dig it, I can relate to him. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, sorry. Um, another notable content creator in the G.I. Joe sphere is actually in the chats, and I hope he's still here. JLS Comics, salute to you, sir, because once again, a very important resource and well researched pillar uh, if you're not familiar with this channel check out jls comics for a series of who is and then insert gi joe oh, cobra name here i was like i know that name yes no, I'm, so, yeah it's jls dude yeah some man. weeks ago my new shit was version one grunt or 1.5 the swivel arm immediately hopped onto his channel to check out grunt's character arc and let me just mm. tell you i mean apart from the video being fantastically well produced and researched the thing that struck me most was i think of all the gi joe characters humble modest infantryman grunt has got the best character arc of all like his start hmm. point versus where he ends up in in the comic why does he not like that <laughs> Michael Ironside. <laughs> well, so in the bad. 90s, but he, so in sad. the 90s, he got that high top fade and he, you know, the shouty face. Must have gotten some reconstructive <laughs> surgery or something. But, anyways, he might, yeah. Um, let me just clue you into the fact that Grant starts out, as I say, the backstop, the, the, the bullet stopper of the G.I. Joe team, the basic infantryman, leaves to become a student, to study engineering, meets his future wife, Lola, um, has a life kids at all becomes a civil engineer no. offers his services to gi joe on numerous occasions duke says eventually he's like grunt we need you building stuff more than we need you breaking stuff so carry on with your life my man um he eventually becomes the ambassador to sierra gordo did you guys i mean that's, that's information that falls into the idw run era i hope you're not sporting this entire video i would like to watch it <laughs> <laughs> but not only oh, that yeah, but sorry. his wife lola was in the armed lola, forces no. but we find out later she wasn't just a, a helicopter mechanic which was her cover story she was like some kind of secret agent operative because oh, she wow. conducts a rescue mission when grunt is taken <laughs> hostage by well let me not spoil but yes in sierra gordo ambassador brunt Brunt, Ambassador Graves, right. um, gets taken hostage, and they fight. They fight from the inside, and Lola fights from the outside, and GI Joe comes in and gets involved. But Absolutely like, just crazy. in terms of a character arc, that's pretty broad. Like Snake Eyes, his arc is done by the time we in, we we meet him in GI Joe. Like he's gone through Nam, he's lost his parents and his his twin. He's done his training. Like he is fully formed as a character. He's already even started his dalliance with scarlet by the time we meet him uh so as i say 
Grant's arc, you're going to struggle to find an arc that, that has more developments on it than that. Maybe Billy. Maybe. Billy. Uh, I'm Billy. not going to spoil, spoil Billy's story. Oh, so thank you, JLS Comics. Is... Salute, man. And thank you for yeah. Cordon Hierro for joining us. Franklin, Benitez, uh, well, Jenna, for your kind words for HEC, and Terrence Charles. Well, let's yeah, get into some some happy times. And Terry Turner, it's always cool to see Terry yes, Turner. Yes, happy hey, times. Um, happy times. The photo competition keeps trucking. Whoa, this time with an the, entry the from... photo competition. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Who wins today? Yeah. Who wins today? This no. time, Talking Joe has entered uh, some oh, images. Cool. Yep. He, oh, cool. Uh, had a family trip to the Alps. Get some of that That's late my season skiing, perhaps. No, we're never. We've got Spirit <laughs> trying to put a knife through Roadblock with a sort of it's snowy background. Knife. I guess it's something's happening here. Roadblock. Maybe it's Sartan dressed up as Spirit or as Maybe. Roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. He's insulting Roadblock's cooking. That's what I think is going on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's you like made Gordon one more ass. gum, Joe. Ah. Yeah. Well, it's looking violent. It's like, I mean, Gordon, blow me. <laughs> Spirit's got a knife drawn, and he, he's got roadblock by the throat almost. Yeah, it's... Hanging off the cliff. Brutal it's beautiful stuff. with some snow in the background. Roadblock's well. looking him dead in the eye going, harder. I'm definitely <laughs> thinking we've got some... Oh, wait, no, no, now we've got an image of Flint um, in the foreground. Scrambling along some rocks while Roadblock is doing some hand to hand with Crocmaster. Looks like Crocmaster's down for the count, but Flint's covering him with a pistol. Just in case. In the deck. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get mm. rid of the evidence, throwing him off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> what is Crocmaster okay. doing up in the Alps to begin with? I've Who just knows? broken something. Smells like almonds. Hello. <laughs> 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 Trying to get up. Oh, I believe uh, this is this is Mark's son, who oh, cool. uh, apparently doesn't go anywhere without bringing some Joes along. Alps, no, notwithstanding, which bad. yeah, I, I can as agree we with all that. don't do, we all Actually, do that. We all take our Joes. Oh yeah! Oh, oh. oh my goodness! Oh, that makes We've me got so an Croc Master has sent Tiger Force Duke uh, uh, Bazooka. Tiger Force Bazooka. That one. Um, we'll be talking about him in a minute. Um, he's not looking too good. Looks like he's got a broken leg. Oh, brutal what you can do with a classified figure. You can kind of twist their ankles all the way around to indicate oh. like a foot clearly not on its proper plane of movement. But a lovely depth of focus. Yeah. Kiwi. The, the textures uh, on, the, on these rocks are really good. Mm. Wow. Really cool. Kiwi G.I. Joe and Customs Collection. That reminds me, I'm going to be doing Cooking with Roadblock on my channel. Is it going to be like Whoa. Cooking with Scorpion? I hope so. Um, <laughs> that you know what awesome. I mean? Then you know what I mean. Get Dude, these here. shots are amazing. I dig them. They're Beautiful. Fun. And letting that... great scenery. Great scenery. Yeah. Great time of day. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Sky. Awesome. Just testimony to how great these figures can look. They really sing. When you take them outside, I mean, not all of us have access to the Alps, <laughs> but um, hopefully we all have access to the sun, and that's that's awesome. I'm not sure if um, Mark was taking the pictures or his son was, um, but regardless, I mean, the work being put into these, the posing, the drama, as we've already said, the setting, very very cool. Thank you for sharing and pass on your uh, pass on our thanks and our congratulations to your boy. We had another photo guys, submission on the back of our Dusty episode. Oh, Paul's got You guys light. need one of these, man. Like, get yourself one of these cool little Godox light mounts or something similar where you can change the intensity of the light and the color of the light. It's really going to take your phot photography game up there. It's going to help you a lot for those situations where you want to shot, but you can't get the light. Then you've got one of these guys. Not sponsored, by the way. Just really like those kind of products. Carrying right along. Sorry. So Paul, in our he's never Dusty mentioned this special, like before. Hmm. <laughs> in our Dusty fun. special uh, last week's podcast episode, um, we got into the topic of what Dusty looks like without the camo on. Uh, Tiger Force Dusty gives us an impression of of what he would look like. This is the classic 1988 figure. Um, 
Paul said he looks a lot like one uh, Russian head of state. <laughs> I and did. He we does. have a wonderful collage by Alan Grant. Um, <laughs> Kiwi living here in Does Bruce. Putin ever smile, bro? I'm so... <laughs> it's like, I think either this guy has the worst luck with photos. Like, they're like, okay, smile. And he's like, okay. And then they take the photo. And he was smiling. They're like, why didn't you smile? And he's like, I was... <laughs> You know, <laughs> but I think um, folks in the chat, uh, do you think that is a, a, a reasonable approximation? In yeah, plastic, give us your thoughts. Uh, however, wrong. Alan has a theory that Dusty, without camo paint, actually looks a lot more like former Hasbro employee Mark Webber, now working for Valiverse. Mark Webber, um, more than meets the eye. <clears throat> Yeah. It, it feels like a more plausible. I mean, I, I, oh, well, I mean, I, it feels more plausible this theory because I mean, I think often they did obviously model the looks of the characters of employees of the company. Um, oh, well, here, here's the surprise: in 1985, Mark Webber was collecting GI Joe, not working on the brand. Oh, okay, okay. So that's mm. well. Until you said that, it was a more plausible theory. Hmm. Hmm. And Vlad was probably working for the KGB in 85, so I don't think pictures of him were likely to be very common, especially not in the offices wow. of an American Unless toy Unless he was, um, you know, inserted into Hasbro and he was one of the sculptors there. He was working Look, undercover. The likeness is there. And we Paul, don't know where the Cobra Guard came from. I'm sorry. You know? Where did oh. that idea come from? It's the one Someone reason you Hasbro. gave 1985 dusty a four out of five four. in your rating and i'm going to challenge that yeah. say, we're not the we were, he was like mm, we, you remind me of we that weren't guy. discussing tiger force dusty in terms of the rating so paul i'm but I'm either way his you, face man. still upsets me like i don't like dusty's <laughs> face i don't i think it looks horrible he, well like we can't see his face with the paint on it you know that's the thing that's why thankfully original... that's kind of a, that's why he gets four man <laughs> all right all right so i'm not gonna die on this hill but still i, th I think i think it's objective we want a all five of our videos here. where we discuss you know these characters have five out of five for we have to give it we can't to. give everything that we love for out of, you know it is possible to love something that gets four out of five it is possible to love something that comes gets one out of five and people with kids oh you will my, know oh this my goodness. Yes. So, did, you, did you learn your hatred cloud the judgment <laughs> Stop All right, it. boys. I think it's Stop it. I like this lots of weekend, bad movies. This weekend you know. past, guys, we uh, had a wonderful submission on our special Everybody forces is working uh, for playlist. We need to do a Rocky Four with you, Paul. <laughs> Cobra so Car good. Wash uh, from Berg Love Force member bubbles. Cliff McCarthy, and it is joyous. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this thing came out of nowhere, bro. Steve's like, make a make a thumbnail for this. I'm like, for a car wash. I'm like, is that like a you know like a cool code, code name? And I'm like, no, nope, really it's is literally. What, it's, it's what it what it says on the bottle, bro. And it's got some cool water effects. Uh, Cliff, yeah. <laughs> like, but don't you guys think the water is impressive in this? Like some of the like. There's At like one just point, he's pushing, water pushing water yeah. through like the, the, the classic G.I. Joe black rubber hoses. And it looks, yeah, it looks like a hose pipe. I mean, the, basically, it's a music video, right? In a very mm. kind of 1980s style with yeah. working, working, what's the, the artist's working name? Both heroes. Oh, uh, no. Loverboy. Working for the weekend. Is it? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, it's uh, that's off the top of my head. I could be wrong. Anyway, I wasn't familiar anyway. with the track until this this video, and it was really? jubilant. A really buffed up. Oh, I remember custom. this from GTA and uh, Vice City, I think. Mm. Well, and Anyway, Lava Boy, you're right, Stephen. He's washing his stun. He's soaping it down. <laughs> he's scrubbing it. He's hosing it off, and he's got his shirt off, and it's <laughs> it's Roadblock's torso underneath. So, no, Road Pig. Red pig stores. Red pig. Yeah. But with different arms because they're bare. They don't have like the straps on it. Anyway, um, he is just this buffed up stun driver adoring his vehicle. And Cliff has come up with various 
hysterical permutations and ways of using the stun. I mean, at one point, he kind of splits the cabs and <laughs> lies down in between them. Just classic, classic car wash stuff. I Shenanigans, that. if you will. And the other guys are like, <laughs> check out this guy. What a joke. But it's glorious. And this is absolutely a very candid moment. Like Cobras, when they're not toting laser guns and yeah, falling Cobra out of are people too, going, you know. You know, the they run their own the evil water. car washes. It was a lot of fun. I absolutely enjoyed it. I thought it was, it's, it's a great little video. You can definitely, you can start your day off with this thing every day. Mm-hmm. You know, Link is in the description below. So if you haven't seen it, you know, you know it's a goodie when various members of the Boat Force um, send you uh, DMs on different social medias to go, I love Cobra Car Wash. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, thank, so, you, thank so you so much. This is hilarious. Yeah. An absolute, we an extend absolute the invitation to anyone who would like to have a video put up on the channel. I mean, we offer our, yeah, our platform, do. our modest platform um, to, to G.I. Joe content creators anywhere, really. Just get in touch with us. DM us. Yeah. And whenever you, whenever you see the little the little thing on the thumbnail, Special Forces, that is uh, us hosting someone else's video, giving someone a chance to kind of just get their creativity out there and just show off how cool their collection is and how cool this, you know, their music choices are. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, guys, Cliff, Cliff's uh, got good music taste. Uh, I follow a lot of, I follow him on Insta. He often posts uh, stories and things like that with various like snippets of tunes. And I'm like, yeah. I dig that. I dig that. I dig that. I don't know that. That's cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Bart. Um, guys, there was question another before, we, before we move on. Oh, oh. <laughs> question for Moonlight. <laughs> Too many of us driving. You do it. You do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Moonlight forty seven. If GI Joe starts their own, who would lead the way? Wild card or quick kick? Dude, what's the wild card? <laughs> yeah, fourth favorite <laughs> character. Um, Wildcard's a good choice because he, he's just wearing that torn shirt, that torn torn vest. I mean, it's clearly torn on the sleeves. Um, that's kind of he'd actually be quite perfect call. for it. Yeah, for sure. Quick kick. Yeah, that would be a kind of a um, '80s franchise kung fu car wash or something, karate car wash. <laughs> like everyone would yeah. be themed. Or you could use the road pig body again, and you can use DJ. I think that'd be quite fun. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Would right. that imply that DJ is wearing blackface? No, um, no. Maybe. I don't know. But like, I mean, not, what, what an appropriate is body. That he, I, I just he is. automatically is went to the, I wanted the road pig body. I thought that looked cool. That would be super really weird. weird. Do we have it? I mean, is, is there a buff, like, uh, you know, like shirtless character in Joe? I don't think there is. Uh, is there? Shirtless. Well, Belrog. Ah, Belrog could work. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Moonlight. Yeah, use the Balrog body. Okay, so I just need Balrog and we can get, get that video. Moonlight's okay. got it. He's got our back. Use the Belrog body for DJ. Hell yeah. I still think he's wearing blackface because. DJ's got that awkward thing where the flesh tone is painted. It's not the plastic color. Oh, yeah. oh no. It always looks a little bit off, a little bit too shiny. And his features. I haven't looked yeah. close enough on my DJ to realize that, actually. Mm. We know. Gosh darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Just leave that Ooh. figure in the bag. Uh, that's going to be a, one of our spotlight episodes one day. Oh, like, if I ever if buy it. Oh yeah, you don't have it's a DJ. Me in the face for twenty five dollars, but it's missing the antenna. So I'm like, ah, you can't buy it then. You need the antenna. Come on, you do, uh. you do. You need that crappy figure in all his complete glory. Um, so guys, Bart, Bart wants us to move on because don't speak of DJ here. He says, <laughs> move on, Agreed. guys. Can, before we get to Cobra Commander, issue Paul four, is excited of an incredible trailer I'm, that came out this week. There has been a little piece of internet that has happened. Yeah, no, there was a trailer that dropped. Also, I just want to throw this out there, guys. Ghostbusters Afterlife is great. It's a great little family movie. Go and check it out. Don't hmm. listen to the, one, the one that came out three years ago. Sure. No, not Afterlife. Sorry, uh, Frozen Empire. 
<laughs> it's it's a fun little romp. It was a cool. I enjoyed it. It was a cute film. I'm not saying it's the best film ever. It's just it's a cute, fun film. It's a bit safe though. That's my only criticism. Guys, the Transformers no. trailer dropped the other day. Transformers one. Now, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be cool here. I know that this is made for kids. Please don't tell me in the comments that it looks like it's made for kids. I know it's made for kids. But, oh my God, this is what I imagine it's like at Hasbro. Hasbro's like, let's go to social marketing and media. What do our analytics say? Uh, sir, the analytics say that everybody really wants a Transformers film set on Cybertron. That would be awesome. Yes, a serious adventure mm. on Cybertron would be great for the Transformers film franchise. Cybertron. Cybertron. I know. We'll make a dumb kids movie set on Cybertron. With buddy, uh, buddies, Optimus Prime and Megatron. Yes! Uh, so, shut up! We're making a movie. They have made the most lowest common denominating safe version of that story they could have done, and it pisses me off unbelievably. Sorry. Just have to rant. Like, oh my word. Why, Hasbro? Like, I, like, I get that you're going for kids, but as a kid, I would think it's stupid. It looks like it's made for the same audience that watches Barney for 5-6. Ah! What a missed opportunity. Anyway, file that one under shit, because it's going to be the trailer. It was difficult to get through the trailer. I was like, this is so boring. Anyway, oh, and oh, let's turn like Optimus Prime from being a nerd to being a working class guy. Yeah, because everybody wants to Bruce Spring to see the shit. Let's not make Megatron the, the cool... Megatron is actually the cool guy in that in his past. Uh, and Optimus is the nerd. And the whole point of him being a nerd and becoming Optimus is cool. Anyway, looks like yep. shit. Who's with me? Oh, everybody. Okay, let's move along. Angry Sorry, fan boy rent. Well, I don't know. Ooh. I'll be there watching it with my three-year-old because that's... Awesome. Because that's... I that's don't know. Bluey looks... That's the Bluey's target better. market. But Bluey yeah, I better. think... I don't. Paul, I think there are a lot of people excited for this. Um, I think they're just happy to get any Transformers. Sometimes, you know, oh, the guys, um, even even if it's, <laughs> even if obviously it isn't, you know, in line with what they've established before. You know, like with what their original, you know, like setup was before everything. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it is a weird move. I think they obviously saw there's a lot of interest in uh, films added at a younger audience. <laughs> Sorry, Ross. Darren, Darren oh, thank you. No. Carry on, Ross. Sorry, my dude. <laughs> you got to do the uh, trailer voice. You saw them fighting on Earth. You saw them fighting on Cybertron. Now get, now the, get real the real story, story of how they hung out together as kids and annoyed the real enemy. Old people. Old people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Darren. Well, it I mean it fits with it with a trend. I mean they've they've done it with Star Wars, they've gone back and done a, a, a um youngling show. Um yeah, they're like making all the brands, shit. you know, Mario's making and they've made the Mario animated movie. They did that Sonic cool, in the last couple of years. Yeah, they that hit and cool. missed. But they're obviously trying to take an established brand and aim it at a younger market. Um, of the three things that you've mentioned, you know, two of those people wanted to make a good movie. The other one wants to make money. I'll let you figure out which one is which. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not saying I'm looking forward to this at all. I mean, I definitely oh, can God, see. No. That, so that, you're being devil's advocate, which I appreciate. Yeah, yeah, you know, and Stephen's being a dad. You know, he's like, I'll take my kid to see it. You know, and, and this is the way well, I get him into Transformers. I, very sheepishly, <laughs> I enjoyed the trailer because I identified very quickly. Dad no, I identified dad very brain. quickly what it was, what it, what its objectives were to make a sort of family-friendly Transformers movie. And I'm like, I'm here for that. I like the designs. The action looks fun. The scripting is kinetic and, you know, there's a lot of good balance between these characters. I I'm suppose they don't all look the same. Well, for, for a long time, Transformers fans, there will be Easter eggs worth picking out of this. Like, mm. clearly getting to see Quintessons um, and seeing the relationship between Megatron and Optimus Prime, even if it's candy coated and family friendly, there will be some care given to penning them as former nemeses. I mean, there's that one throwaway line where Optimus says, You're going to be the death of me to Megatron, which is there's a barb there. And that's riffing on Transformers the movie, 1987. Is it 87? 
86. Whenever Transformers the movie came out. Anyway, yeah, bottom line is, I'm convinced that the writers of this know what they're doing. They're just packaging it very safely. And no, I'm I'm genuinely going to take interest in watching this movie. So, Paul, Dude, I've, I'm you can AI watch all the, the Ghostbusters you want, my friend. But uh, this is this is tickling Steve, my I'm actually surprised movie going. coming from you. But I'm surprised of that coming from you because... I'm not as precious with all Transformers. The Transformers. I... Really? You're not that no. precious about Transformers? Okay. Absolutely not. They all I, look I, 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 I can't endure any of the Michael Bay ilk. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, Transformers has my attention. I just think they were going in such a cool direction. And when I saw the Transformers 1 trailer, I was like, oh, cool. It's going to be like something interesting. Like, oh, it's going to be set in Cybertron. That's cool. And then I saw it and I was like, okay. It's uh, Turner and Hooch in space. Paul... Your expectations are set that looks at, the same. at War for Cybertron video game. You want that story brought to the big screen and you're not going to mm, rest. That's what we did. deserve. But mm, they keep right. giving us shit. They need to print like money, keep... buddy. Well, they thankfully, they, they have compromised and we are going to get a Transformers G.I. Joe movie. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll I'll see believe that when I see it. it. I'll believe it when I'm sitting in the theater. Because, yeah. You know, for sure. But I am pretty sure they said that there's, it's still happening. It's, it's a common. They're doubling down on that and tripling down on that. Um, but it's definitely coming, guys. It still definitely doesn't take coming. away from the fact that, like, the tacked-on ending for uh, Transformers was it Rise of the Beasts? No, that's the most recent one. Well, that's happening. That's officially Beast happening. Wars. I, I don't know what what that movie was. Whatever the sting was at the end was pretty slapdash and not not fully thought through at all. Like it, it was. <laughs> it was a tease for the sake of tease. It was the sort of the most nothingness reveal of all time. It's like, we've got these two properties. Let's put in a sting a la MCU movies of, of, of old. Um, anyway. Well, I'm, I'm glad that our audiences have gotten, you know, different points of view here. You know, we've got the more, more, more reasoned objective view of Paul. And we have like the dad view. Thanks, of Rob. Even. You know, he's he's ready to be entertained. He's gonna take his son. He's gonna I'm ready to it's eat a, good, a lot of popcorn. You know, he's gonna really eat a lot of popcorn. He any excuse to get out of the house with his kid. Before we move on from movie news, a cool thing that I think is happening for Comic Con Cape Town, which is an event that's happening next weekend, which I'll be um uh, exhibit exhibiting at with my comic shop. Um, one of the guests announced, or at least it'll be on one of the panels there, is Andrew Koji, who uh played Storm Shadow. In oh, Snake Eyes. Shit, please. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, oh, damn. So I would have loved to have met Andrew Koji. And I didn't know a lot about him before actually doing some more research. I mean, he's been in a ton of things. He was in an absolutely incredible series called Warrior. Um, so in Cape good. Town. Shot in Cape Hell Town, yeah. yes. The same as the, the movie that they'll be discussing called Boy Kills World. Check the trailer out. It actually looks Can't really wait good. for that. Uh, I think I sent you guys a trailer. And excitingly for me as well, he was the English voice actor for one of the major characters in one of the um, Final Fantasy XIV uh, expansions, Bones. Stormblood, um, yeah. where he played uh, <laughs> the main one of the main characters from that expansion. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping to check out that panel. I know he's not doing signings or autographs, or at least so far they haven't confirmed that. I mean, it's, it's days to go, but I think they're only there for this panel. Um, but I, I, I hope I can meet him. Um, seems like a really cool guy. Yes. Very determined yeah. um, guy who wants to be in the entertainment industry. Um, he produced, mm. wrote, I think directed, edited many shorts of himself, kind of like in his earlier, you know, in his earlier years. So he's very much a passionate uh, martial artist and filmmaker. So Just I'm looking forward up, to meeting man. this dude. And probably Hell the best yeah. thing of that Snake Eyes movie, to be honest. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm hoping yeah. if they yeah, do do, the curb, I mean, Transformers G.I. Joe movie, he will come back as um, Storm, Shadow. Storm of Shadow. Yeah, the, I would I'll that. Us, that would be I'll, freaking cool. I mean, I, I no points for guessing. Paul's boy Storm Shadow is the best part of not only the Snake Eyes movie, but Rise of Cobra and Retaliation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they keep costing him well, you know. Also, um, well. and I also just I, I want to make a mention of it because it was mentioned here in the in the chat. But the Fallout oh. TV series is amazing. Mm. Um, oh. Absolutely loved it. Still, I actually want to watch it again. That's how much I loved it. I'm a big fan of the game, so 
I wow. just felt that it rung right. And yeah, it's just great when people really care about what they're doing, care about the franchise, care about the fans of the franchise. And then you get something like Fallout. It's really good. It's really, really fantastic. Loving it. I think I need to expose yeah. myself to some gameplay before I watch episode two because episode one had things that I liked and things that I didn't like. And I think mm -hmm. it'll be more more sense will be made of this world if I see what a Fallout game actually plays like. Yeah, that's the one criticism. One. Mm. It's not very that's the one criticism I've, I've seen of the news. series. It, 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 is, it is opaque to a certain degree to people who have no knowledge of the Fallout universe. But I think it, the knowledge to play Weird, to watch Delia Fallout is very... It. Is very mm -hmm. um, it's very basic, you know. Just you have to understand there's an apocalypse. There's essentially like essentially three two factions, um, mm -hmm. depending on where you are in America. Um, but yeah, also I've only played Fallout Three, Fallout New Vegas. I've played some of one and two. Jeez, I believe. You played the two best games. Yep. Well, there you go. Um, but yeah, oh, definitely oh. check it out. And uh, speaking of video games, I believe you guys have got a chance to play a brand new video game recently. Oh, Stephen did. Steven got to play a brand new <laughs> I'm the only game one games. who played the, the Wrath of Cobra You are the demo? only person that's played. I was, I was on PlayStation just... Store. I'm not going to play it on my PC, bro. Whoa. I don't play bro. games on my PC. Well, is a I... PlayStation I'm a console extremist. gamer. If I play PC, games on my PC, then I've got games on everything. I need a break from stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, when he's on his PC, he's taking I work a break on my from PC. Gaming. I don't want to play... I work on my PC and I make <laughs> art on my PC. I need a break from it. I can't play games here. Otherwise, I'll sit and die in this chair. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Even. even if it means not playing a GI Joe game. Look, guys, even I, if it means I cobbled together some Whoa. notes somewhere. I wasn't can't can't help himself. <laughs> I've got some things to yeah, say about it from the standards. trainer's point of view. Look, it's pretty <laughs> mid. I mean if Yeah, don't, I don't can tell you that immediately from the trailer. <laughs> so what is this game rage for? What is this game called before we move too much further? I've said GI it's a Joe, game. Wrath of Cobra. It's available Breath on Steam. The demo is playable now. There are two levels. Breath One is Cobra. set on the Cobra mothership or airship. Um, the other is set on a castle, a Cobra castle. Uh, in the first, in the first um, chapter or stage, you face up against, among other things, Baroness, um, the his tank, uh, various Cobra troops like. Blue shirts that come down from jump jetpacks and Viper gliders, um, Crimson Guards that are able to kind of like teleport themselves. I didn't know that was a Crimson Guard ability, but fun, whatever. Now it is. Um, cool. It's it's a pretty straight <laughs> down the line beat 'em up. Um, the mm -hmm. the combat is 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 hugely weighted towards just fisticuffs. Uh, you mm -hmm. can pick up guns. And fire them five times before throwing them, which is an absolute staple of that genre, which is kind of a criticism of mine because you know, GI Joe are weapons experts. They don't run into a castle and just punch people. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted it more heavily weighted towards gunplay, but I suppose we've gotten that in the past from GI Joe. Like the rise of Cobra video game is just like a, a shoot fest. And Operation Blackout was also another like just you just shoot fest. Shoot fest. So it's fun and, and this will probably be become... called shit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this will probably like really um come into its own in the multiplayer because you can play mm. up to four players. Um, I think maybe more. Um so it's got that going for it. <laughs> Uh, I think it so is. It's a got a retro game. 2D style to it. It's not like it 3D. It does. It actually yeah. looks like um, Street of Rage. It does. Like, so I was going to say. The sprites are smaller. Oh. The character sprites are smaller. So it's more mm -hmm. in line with Captain America and the Avengers. Uh, and Turtles. You, and Turtles, yeah. 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 Um, the moves don't Point. seem as explosive or as varied, but the sound effects are crunchy. You get like pop up, like kablam, kapows, you know, on a metal <laughs> on the screen. Um, one commentator said it's very retro 80s. I would argue with that. While it does use all the designs from the 80s, it's very much a 90s presentation. The graphics, mm. the soundtrack, it's very much feels like uh, DT, D, DIC, G.I. Uh, Joe era. You know, got to get tough sort of thing. There are four things I can say about this game uh, based on the trailer. And I'm basing my knowledge here on the trailer. <laughs> The first thing that they should do is, is on the Sky Striker, there is a mm -hmm. line around the G.I. Joe logo 
They should yeah. take that out. It looks shit. Guys, it's not yeah. difficult to do. Okay. Secondly, um, uh, what Steven said now, it being very, like, average, I can see that from the trailer. Now, this is not dissing the guys who made it because making games is hard. Um, I just think that while it might look like stuff like Turtles and while it might look like Streets of Rage, it doesn't, uh, to me, it doesn't seem like it has a good fighting system. It seems like it has a very straightforward, very boring fighting system. It seems like, it also seems like the enemies use the same animation set as the main characters, which is also kind of a bummer. It doesn't make them look interesting. It doesn't make your main character stand out enough. And the sound effects and stuff are good, but I can also tell when you punch, there's that um, flatness. There isn't a bounce and a crunch to to your punching animation. Like that's something that Turtles and Street, uh, Streets of Rage do really well. And also, not spoken about enough, the new Double Dragon Gaiden, which is also incredibly good. Um, and so that's my only uh, issue with it. Like I feel like um, it just doesn't seem to be bouncy and uh, bouncy enough. It's not giving it. It's not giving cool feedback loop from the trailer that I've seen. I well, will play the demo. I will most likely buy the game. I want to support the company that makes a game of something I love. And I got to say, it looks infinitely better than uh, most of the G.I. Joe games we've had since the year 2000. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> thankfully, I mean, they have brought it out in such a degree that, yes, it sounds like they've released two <laughs> stages. You know, we get to see um, the art style of the game. I mean, I've seen some cool screenshots. I mean, the characters generally look very accurate um, and very varied to... Um, to obviously what we you know understand gi joe to be the backgrounds are very colorful um it's nice to mm. see a lot of variety in the enemies that you're fighting um from from what i've seen of the game and yes with them only having released two stages this does give them a chance to um to obviously hear people's feedback you know they'll have, they'll get the reviews on steam they'll get people's videos they'll look at all of it and it, it's a period hopefully for them to you know kind of like go into um the polishing final page. version of the game polishing the stage and actually taking in people's criticisms um especially because i mean as steven said we are used to gi joe shooting you know um and yeah. if it is very much a beat-em-up then you kind of almost have to change the roster of characters that you're using to ones that you would be more expectant to be beat-em-up characters you know obviously snake eyes you put scarlet in there you put quick kick in there um the, the, the guy with the nunchucks well, the, the playable Nunchucks. character roster, uh, you, for the demo, you can either play as Duke or Scarlet. Nice. Ah. Hold Snake Eyes in reserve. But I think the full list would be Snake Eyes, uh, Gung Ho, Roadblock, and Ripcord. Oh, interesting. I think, you know, it'd be cool. Like, what I think would be cool as well in, in the combos, if it's like punch, pu like if it's Scarlet, she could go punch, punch. Then all of a sudden she's got the crossbow in her hand doing like an uppercut with that and then crossbow, crossbow kind of thing as part yeah. of the combo. Yeah, and I think it, uh, as cool. in line with the like, like, cartoons, bah, bah, bah. they can do, <laughs> yeah, they can do the shooty gun. You can pick it up as a, as, a, as an extra. Um, but yeah. I think it is kind of fine that you could still expand the roster. They don't have to be purely yes. the Kung Fu or the martial arts guys. So you exactly. do have those sections in the cartoons where they do end up having to do fisticuffs. Um, so removing their guns to a certain degree I think can also still make sense, you know, as I'm arguing. You can do the Marvel versus Capcom thing. When there's characters in like 2D fighting games that are primarily gun characters, um, they find ways to make yeah. the gun interesting for a super move. Gun as the final move, yeah, that. like one, two, three, duh, 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 yeah, as you said, it could have been an interesting like special move. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, I think as they go ahead, they can probably do that, and they can take inspiration from a lot of the really good um, beat 'em ups that have come, you know, out obviously of the last With guns. Years. With guns. Yeah, if you are, so. Punisher wasn't bad. It was actually very well designed and very well balanced with the gun combat stuff. Oh, it yeah. Was, that's uh, the best anyway. example. Elliot, while we've got you, what did you think of that video game yesterday? Hello, Ellie. It was so small. It was so small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want bigger character sprites. Yeah. Please. Big games. Yeah. And maybe, big people. I mean, it all moved along one plane. Uh, something that I miss with beat em up games is the lack of platforming. Um, like, Mm. You, you're just walking. You're walking from start to finish. And while it's fun, you see lots of Easter eggs. Like at one point on the Cobra Mothership, you're walking past clearly the tail fin of a uh, Night Raven drone. Which ah, is, great. Oh, love that. Love that. What else did we see? Um, at the Cobra Castle, you face off a kind of a mid-level boss of a snake, snake armor. It's trying to smash you with this hammer fist. Lovely, lovely stuff. 
deep cuts like the Cobra Bazooka Trooper from the 25th anniversary line. You know, the one with the kind of mesh on his helmet and then an RPG. Yeah. They have those Captain as a, America, as a and class. the Avengers. And um, the uh, tan colored um, Cobra Troopers, they throw sticks of dynamite. Like they're having fun with their that's trooper cool. classes. I don't yeah, think I can see that. That's the cool like stuff. Night Vipers, Alley Vipers, etc. But I could be wrong. Uh, there yeah. definitely was an Easter egg of a Cobra Invader uh, in the, mm. the trailer. We didn't see it in the um, the gameplay that they dropped, the demo gameplay. Owie. You have an owie. Oh, dear. Do you want to see? Oh, it? no. I'm going to talk to my friends some more. I was, I, was, I was sore. I hope you figure that out, Elliot. Figure it out. And, um... And yeah, Will, this uh, what you've put forward here, um, uh, hoping that this leads into an open world GI Joe game. That is an idea I think that we've we've pitched many times over the years. I think we had at least mm -hmm. one episode where we were like, "This is the type of game that we wish we could get as a as a GI Joe game." Yeah, open world GTA or uh, Metal Gear Solid Five in a way as well. Um, game where you can kind of just infiltrate bases. You can take stuff on. You can take your vehicles out there. You go out and do to you know do your Whatever you want to the judges, but in the open world style, um, that's definitely something that the type of game I think the ultimate version of Judge that we've always wanted for show. Don't worry, Hasbro will eventually listen. The, right. They're yeah. still in and, the works, and we've seen publicity on it, so it's it's in all likelihood going to happen. There is a GI Joe triple A title. <laughs> Those are the yeah, words being bandied sure. about. Um, so I hopefully we're going to get that. This is just a bit of fun to tide us over. And yeah, to be honest, I think so. I'm delighted that GI Joe is as a video game. I can play this yeah, with I'm my wife. Like, <laughs> like Dude, human, like, and I'm it's a cool game, game that that looks that looks very accessible as well. The beat em up mm. genre is a very easy genre to get into. Things and as long like. as the gameplay is rewarding um, and interesting and varied, um, it doesn't even Just matter if you are a fan of G.I. Joe or not. It is a game that people will play. Um, yeah, and yeah. if you get, an the more people get yeah. playing the game, um, the more people get their eyes on G.I. Joe, the more people know about G.I. Joe, and the more they'll, they'll start, you know, like, like wondering, oh, what is G.I. Joe? You can get them at the toys, get them into the cartoons, into the awesome Transformers G.I. Joe movie starring Andrew Koji. And maybe get them to the comic books. Comic books. Yeah. Yeah. Like the one we'll be talking about right now. I mean, obviously Moonlight, kids can't uh, read this one, but uh, maybe the adults, their parents can read this one. Moonlight 47 goes, would asking for a soul style G.I. Joe be a bit much? Yes, it would be. Not because <laughs> I think it's implausible or unfeasible, but because um, the G.I. Joe brand is currently in a place where they're trying to attract new market it's in like a new market phase so they're going to do as much as they can to kind of catch the let's call it the common denominator the as wide and net as yeah. possible so that's yeah. why so, beat em up is a good choice as it's like a as an entry game yeah exactly or it's more open world gta types game i think a dark a dark a souls type game would be fantastically fun to play i think it'd be very cool and if gi joe if if uh hasbro was the kind of company that um you know, looked after G.I. Joe and kept it as a niche product and looked after its niche fan base and tried to reward its niche fan base with all this interesting stuff. Or G.I. Joe had become super, super popular and they had the money for special projects. We might even get something like that. I mean, we got War for Cybertron, um, which is arguably the best Transformers game. Not arguably, it is the best Transformers game ever made ever and one of the best versions, way, ways to enjoy um, Transformers. And that was because it was at the height of Transformers popularity. They were like, huh, yeah, you guys make this cool thing. Go for it. We'll make a toy line <laughs> to go with it. We'll make money. Ha, ha, ha. Go. But now oh, that yeah. Transformers needs to make money again, they're like, oh, we're going to play it safe. Let's make all everybody look the same. We'll call that one Megatron or Optimus. I don't know. They all look the same. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> the knights that say niche. Thank you, Bart. Yeah. <laughs> We're all want to be French this. here in the Commonwealth. Absolutely. Last word well, on this. I only know its pronunciation is niche. When I hear niche, that sounds wrong to me. G.I. Joe has to get kids back interested or else we're the end of the line. And it looks niche. like it might be niche. the end of the line for Cobra Commander in issue four of the Skybound Cobra Commander miniseries. Or is it? Last issue we ended off oh, with the... the I mean, Nemesis. 
Sorry. Nemesis and Forcer basically rescuing Cobra Commander, but read ahead, true believers. <laughs> if you don't want to be spoiled, perhaps stop uh, listening right now. Um, yep, you might standard miss some disclaimer. Stuff on the way out, but um, <laughs> maybe for the next 15 minutes. Mute your audio. <laughs> um, we Wish you would mute your audio. <laughs> like, something that I only noticed on the, the reread is that Cobra Commander is wiping off the, the bloody smile that was on his faceplate. It's a nice little man hand holds ripper. Yeah. He's, not, um, he's not keeping that around. And we get to see what the Dreadnoughts have been doing with um, the Energon that they've been... Um, siphoning off or, or kind of like um producing and using and um they're the whole way through, though, knows no is looking like a boss yeah, yeah i mean sure. the language that he uses with ripper who he leaves behind on the surface but he says he offers a very calm warning it is in your best interest to stay here the implication is if you run ripper we will catch you and we will make it very painful things will happen yeah don't don't move a muscle mate you're better off just waiting here for me and this is cobra kamani telling someone who regularly tortures people and takes joy Mm -hmm. in throwing people you know to to drag them behind his car and you know kind of rip them to pieces Mm -hmm. as it were um and he's taking this man seriously when he tells him to stay put Mm -hmm. and cobra kamani goes on the ground and he discovers that the dreadnoughts have kidnapped a scientist of some sort, an unnamed scientist, I believe. I don't remember seeing him named by anyone in the issue. Um, I actually want to ask you guys who you thought this would be, but carry on when we when there's a bit of a reveal. <laughs> um, he's very grateful, um, and he's been working very hard on on the um, on what the on what the dreadnoughts have given him access to here. Um, he's been developing weapons for them. He's been um, uh, refining or not refining, but he's kind of like made the energon supply that they have go much further than it could possibly have gone without his help. And well, yep, Darren nailed it. That's definitely my guess at, at, at this point of the story. It's a Dr. Scruffy Bender. <laughs> is this, is that, was that your guess too, Paul? Hold on, hold on, Rob. You're like, who's cruising through this book because you like cruising slow down bro i know steve, steve uh, steven is doing visuals yeah. as as we talk there's there's no connection between oh okay and our talk. okay no because like let's just like take two seconds to talk because the like this doctor looks like t- uh, firstly there's a doctor in the cartoon that looks a lot like this guy mm-hmm. which i feel like they reference and also the doctor in the video game in Atlantis factor oh. um well, yeah, the scientist that helps um, looks a little bit like this guy for some reason. And in my mind, I could be wrong, but I keep thinking that that doctor looks like this doctor. Um, but it could actually, for all I know, it could be a Transformers reference as well. Uh, it might the be. Because I don't I, think that this I don't is know. Mindbender. Okay. My brain automatically yeah. went to Mindbender. But I think by the end of it, you kind of, he's too nice. Although, I mean, in his file code card, you know, Mindbender is set up as a nice person before he's kind of like mind broken um you know becomes his mind bender persona yes hold on moonlight offers a suggestion in the chats he says dr monev i'm going to google that oh maybe that's the name of the guy from atlantis factor and you've forgotten oh that's that's easy for me to forget <laughs> more worried <laughs> about the remembering how to find the poll or what I mean? dr monev Mm, maybe before he gets a haircut. Who is Dr. Mania for those who do not know, Paul? So um, every time I type in Dr. Manev, I keep getting pictures of Dr. Venom. Which is <laughs> um, yeah, um, well, it is Venom. Which backwards. makes sense because, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, but I can't seem, seem to find any... I can't seem to find the name of that character. It's just random scientists, probably something. Oh, I'll, from I'm sure somebody in the chat will bring it out or somebody will mention it. But yeah, I feel like this is a small deep cut to something else, to something else in the media. Steve, what say you, my dude? <laughs> Would you just like, <laughs> I'd oh, say I'm, I'm pacifying a three-year-old who wants to play with the mauler. 
Yeah. <laughs> when I say it was a G.I. Joe heavy weekend, not only were we playing Wrath of Cobra together, but he's he's into it, man. He's into the vintage toys. And that means Daddy's cupboard is now his playground. Ooh, full oh, access. Holler, bro. Well, we see how the Energon is being processed by this doctor into the cubes. So there's our explanation for why it's always in these handy cube, these cube um, shapes warms it's actually a kind of a reduced form of energy on it's it's less potent but it's just i suppose more easily consumed he's able to expand on their production cut. by 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 making more cubes out of less energy on um, yeah exactly it's been cut and that's why it kind of is easy to handle for the dreadnoughts as far as i can tell and yeah they so call he's, it he's making this the, this the smaller amount of it last longer exactly. Dan, i'm not and taking away from your scruff, scruffy scruffy bender i i think it's a good it's a good it's a good name no it might be scruffy bender i was curious as to why uh cobra commander wasn't using his insecticon drones um I'm going to call them Insecticon drones, even though they haven't been named as such on the page. It's clear. Well, it becomes a lot drones. more obvious uh, within the next few panels. They actually, were out of like power. It. They were out of juice, but they love the Energon um, cube. Mm. And they become. And their, their forms become powerful. a lot more obvious. I mean, they are actually differentiated. Um, these are very much Insecticon uh, uh, droids. Mm, um, yeah. You can actually see there is a difference. I hadn't noticed this in the earlier issues that there, there is actually a differentiation between the diff the ones that he has. It's an, it's well, a nice reference. Like so that's cool. Mm. Mm. Good morning, Frostbite. Frostbite. Jojo re -re hey, Frostbite. So don't take away my scruffy bed. No. Okay, Doc Darren, we won't. Guys, <laughs> I'm. I want to revisit the debate that we might have had in issue one. Mm. Where we were talking about Cobra Commander's motivations. Yeah, go ahead. He is he altruistic and he wants to strive for the betterment of Cobra Law, or does he have his own agenda? We kind of <clears throat> dance between the two ideas that maybe he's secretly planning to overthrow Golobulus, that he's not loyal to Golobulus, he's loyal to his idea of Cobra Co Cobra Law, and he wants to insert himself as the leader of Cobra Law. All of a sudden, I'm thrown into doubt here. I feel like Cobra Commander is loyal to Cobra Law and Golobulus because right to the very end of this issue, he is using that kind of language. Oh, um, absolutely. I think... The conversation to himself. It just yeah, it might have failed that much more lofty. Like it, it hurts more, I think, for, for you as you read it because I think it has been to a certain degree ambiguous to this point you can kind of feel like he is definitely doing this for himself um mm. but you can also feel like he is doing it for globulus but also you know there's a, like a middle road where he's playing everyone but i think this issue does make it very obvious that he he really does believe in the in in um cobra law and the future right. of of cobra law and being a part of it and making it a, a force you know to reckon with across the world and the betrayal um that he faces now from nemesis enforcer and by extension globulus um actually really hurts him and this mm. is the the turning point in his character actually um where he really does yeah. become more himself and more the version of the character that i think the energon universe needs going forward you know the, the version of him that is now um, on this quest to, you know, take over the world essentially, and he he has his reasons for for doing that now. Well put, uh, Rob. Because uh, I also feel like it's very easy to get like clouded by your current, by us as fans, by our current un understanding of Cobra Commander, and then uh, putting that version into this version. And he's not that guy yet. You know, this is yeah. This I think it's very easy one to Cobra do Commander. that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and what made that easier is because of our, our former understanding. But I think that's cool that it kind of plays with your understanding of who you think Cobra Commander is, you know? Yeah, I think that that's kind of the fun thing. It's like we get to see this take on him. We get to evolve him. And he's so well done that we do still in, in print uh, a modern version of him in there. Um, but it also is cool that be seeing Cobra Commander while he's still maybe a bit more vulnerable as well. And I yeah. don't mean vulnerable like, like vulnerable as in like, oh, he's still a nothing. I mean, like vulnerable emotionally. He's still naive, you know? Yes. 
it, um, even yeah. though the naivety obviously is his loyalty to an evil, you know, bioorganic organized, you know, like society versus that him thinks they're better than humans. Trying to kill anyway. the humans, but still yeah. there is a vulnerability within him. He's certainly Close not to be vulnerable. I mean, he stands toe to toe mm -hmm. with Nemesis Enforcer, who's been dismembering um, no name dreadnoks left, right, and center, and he takes a hell of a beating. This on top oh, of the fact that he was given a torture session from the dreadnoks before this. And turns the tables by using his tech, using the Insecticons. He's got an ace up his sleeve. After mm. <laughs> He first takes a run up with, with Buzz's chainsaw. That didn't work mm. out too well. Um, gets nice pay, um, pay, 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 nice callback it. there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Steve. It's yeah, just you were flying through that. But the way that he like hits um, Nimbus and Forza there, it's, it's a cool callback to the film. Yes. And to when... As it goes at him earlier. Well, yeah, anyway, we'll go into that later. But, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man, carry on. Steve, I, I derailed you a bit. My apologies. No, I just wanted to say that he uses the the tech to uh, blast Nemesis Enforcer. And I'm wondering, is the implication that Nemesis Enforcer is dead? Maybe seriously injured. Uh, probably not dead, down. No. I don't... Yeah. Well... He slowed down enough to be incapacitated long enough for Cobra Command to get away and obviously get to where he's going to next. Um, mm. Yeah, a spoon killer says panel... he, he Tony Starks him. <laughs> it's a very cool There's moment. A panel... kind of like... <laughs> There's a panel in the in the book where Cobra Command is shooting this like beam up and it's cutting into to Nemesis. And it's mm. such a beautiful panel in the book. When you see it, gorgeous, um, it's the yeah. yellow and blue one, or the cyan and uh, yellow one, which is just... Yeah, it's, a f it's a full page, yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and also... Also... Oh, sorry, uh, Rob, go for no, it. No, 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 go for it, Paul. <laughs> I just wanted the, the, the ripping of the face mask of Cobra Commander's faceplate. Like, mm. we have had literally a whole issue of the Dreadnoughts trying to take that off. And Nemesis Enforcer is just like, I'll take that, and grabs it and pulls it off Cobra Commander's face. And that <laughs> yeah. is insane. That shows you how strong no anti tamper No anti tamper plastic explosives on that helmet. But it oh, does seem to be yeah. this yeah. emanation as it pulls off of Cobra Commander's face. <laughs> now, yeah, this is in classic the mirror face visage <laughs> being ripped off like that and presumably destroyed. Are we set to see a return of the hood? Could this comic book get away with it in its final issue? No, I don't think no. so. I think he might have just have this kind of head wrapping that he has on now, or he will get another hood. I mean, um, uh, face another plate. mirror. Mm. Do you think we or will something? get this one? Oh, the the, the, the helmet, the, the helmet and the handkerchief. No, oh, that's not from really Sigma deep. Six. Wouldn't I that be cool? No, but Hasbro will probably go, yes, we want that look back. We like that one. It's very good. No, I think Hooded, the, Hasbro has made it very, right very obvious that there, there's, there is no rendition of Cobra Commander that they are putting yeah. out that will have Everything the Hood. Like, there is no version of it. Um, Hooded is completely out. Verboten. I, have, I understand they have their reasons. That's fine. I just hope we don't get the handkerchief face one. That's all, because that's. Lame. I think we. I think for the final issue, he'll be like this. He'll have this um, kind of wrapping around his head, and that's about it. But it's cool. I mean, like we we're saying, where he rips the mask off. I mean, uh, up to the last minute, you're still establishing how strong Nemesis Enforcer is. Um, you know, to the last second, and like it really is something. You know, extreme from Cobra Commander that does take him out, and it. And also the, the the conversation between him and Nemesis Forcer also I think finally does bring it does Cobra Commander does realize that he has no place in the Cobra Law um, hierarchy, like there is mm. there is just something about him that is just too alien, you know, and his approach to um, technology and to um, power and how his his philosophy of life and and um, science and stuff like that is too alien. To mm. the conception of that for Cobra Law, because Nemesis record, Force is like your forms? metal, your reliance on metal is disgusting to me. I cannot live with mm. this, and neither can anyone else in Cobra Law. But yeah, there's there a war of words that happened. I mean, Cobra Commander says it's my home, and Nemesis Enforcer is like, it was never your home. 
you were always an outsider and now we've got this doctor yeah. we don't need you so mm. goodbye with your your blasphemous metal um mm. so the betrayal really stings we've discovered something that cobra commander actually cares about like mm -hmm. that's quite a rarity with, with a character who's penned often as flippant as cobra commander this comic booky villain um hey, he, really, he believed and now now he's been cast aside um and that's what gives him the strongest of motivations to formulate his own army his and own giving, yeah the napoleon effect and come right. back yeah like, which i think is fantastic we actually get a really cool origin story for cobra commander you know and i think i was saying earlier as well with also within the energon universe this is his the motivating um point for him you know going forward mm. and it's cool to actually see that moment happen um you know as opposed to we've always been told you know he he was a car salesman you know he had a change of philosophy mm -hmm. um and he kind of just became cobra commander we actually get to see it and i think that's really cool and it's not like we're oh, okay. we're humanizing cobra commander like overly humanizing him or making him you know into a um like always a misunderstood villain you know and we we learn you mm -hmm. know uh, he's still a villain, but we actually get to see that moment where he becomes, you know, who we know him to be, which I think is really cool. It's like um, I wouldn't dance around that. I think it does humanize him. I think we're very yeah. much on side with well, him. Well, to a certain yeah, he's but I think it, it doesn't make him like a misunderstood villain. You know, we we totally get his his intentions are villainous. Um, but mm. I'm saying like humanizing as in like we're not on his side. We're not like oh now we totally understand why you want to kill everyone on Earth. Um, I'm just well, saying the reveal at the end, of course, while Cobra Commander now has access to the Energon supply, uh, he's been tipped off that the major buyer for this power source in, is none other than Mars. So he's mm -hmm. now, I suppose, <clears throat> scheduled to have his date with destiny or date mm. with Destro, uh, which is destiny. It was inevitable, <laughs> but it, it feels like both parties are wrong. bringing something to <laughs> to the the meeting. You know, Destro's got weapons, but they're running out of juice. You know, they're mm -hmm. too ambitious for modern power systems. Cobra Commander and, has this mystical stuff. Yeah, and would you say those are Mobats and his tanks that Destro's making? Because uh, it's <laughs> Mobat ish. Well, that would be in line with Destro's philosophy that he sells yep. to both sides. Both Good sides, job, Paul. Exactly. In the big reveal of Destro standing before his production mm. line, there is definitely a his tank chassis, but there are far more green battle tanks. <laughs> Very conventional. I mean, kind of conventional. They've got like the split in the middle, which is like a c command and conquer affectation, I think. Um, but um, very much a green army tank. So uh, it could be. No bad. <clears throat> G.I. Yeah, Joe's and, uh, going to be built by Destro. Crazy. One, uh, coming back, swinging back to CC quickly, uh, sort of dropped it earlier as well. Like, it's the Napoleon, it's the Napoleon effect, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Napoleon is cast out of society. Well, society shuns him. They don't, they don't like him. So his solution to that is not to, like, and I, and, and I, I actually kind of agree with this. His solution is not necessarily, like, Oh, I'm just going to play nice and be what everybody wants me to be. He's like, no, I'm going to make sure I'm the boss, and then you can kiss my ass. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's a good philosophy, but <clears throat> that's that's Cobra Commander here. He's like, okay, so like um, Cobra Law doesn't dig me. I wouldn't be surprised if the first thing he tries to take over is Cobra Law, um, and conquers Cobra Law first. I think that would yeah, be, be kind of. I mean, you don't just establish Cobra Law and not do anything with it afterwards. And yeah. uh, Spin Killers has said in, in the comments, says, Origin will always be disgruntled businessman who decides to burn down the world that is way scarier than a snake dude. Um, I agree. Not to take anything away from his original Origin, I'm just saying I think in this context, within the Energon universe, this Origin works for this version of Cobra Commander. Mm. I think they, obviously in the original version, I mean, there's a lot of mystery there. It's also, it's more, it's more scary, yes, I think, where it's, it's, a, it's someone completely ordinary becomes the leader of a terrorist organization like there is no you know specific reason why he did this i mean i think like in the real world real evil isn't there isn't necessarily 
a reason why it becomes that way, why it does what it does. It just does it for its own personal reasons. Um, so I'm not saying that the original origin is, is that this origin is better than the original. I'm, personally, I'm saying that I think it, this origin that I've set up here works really well for what they're doing in this version of GI Joe. I don't also, know. Um, yeah, dude, I, I like that as well. I've, I've always loved that concept and I'm loving this version of it as well. I think it's mm. a very, very cool take. I think it's going to be great because Galobulus and um, Cobra Law have already made Cobra Commander feel like, well, you don't belong here. So they they already kind of got like a bit of a species species kind of trait as well, because you know he's also human, and they also kind of get into the they don't like human beings either. So mm. in a weird way, as human beings, Cobra Commander going in there and kicking Galobulus in the nuts is kind of like a heroic thing to do in some respects, you know, because they <laughs> actually also. In some ways, they're kind of a greater evil than Cobra Commander. So it's it's very good writing when you can take a villain, kind of get on his side a little bit uh, before the wheels come off. Um, and which is why I, I specifically like uh, referenced Napoleon as well. Yeah, but anyway, this was a great issue. Maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think? Are we going to give it a rating? Of course we are. Cobra Commander's got Ripper like his dog. He's got a chain on <laughs> his neck. <laughs> um, guys, this is probably my my favoriteist of the all. My favorite. Wow. Of the all. But yeah, I just I'm really digging this retelling of Cobra Commander. Uh, car salesman, be damned! Like this is where my instincts always led me with Cobra Commander. That he he you need to incorporate the Cobra Law element, but making him this mm. outsider makes sense and now he's got strong motivation to to just come back and dominate everyone um mm -hmm. this is yeah this is this is great and he's hard as hell let's not look past the fact that he's held his own in combat with royal guards with nemesis enforcer like he can handle himself in a fight this ain't no coward who hides behind his troops though he can now i mean once he amasses an army he should he should you know, advance to the rear and and be the commander that he should be. <laughs> yeah, like, no, for sure. He can lead if he goes wants. Break to. into his throne room. He's like, "Come at me, bitches! I'm gonna insecticon yeah. your ass." <laughs> I'll be the last boss. Like it'll be cool. Absolutely. Um, got some something I keep neglecting to mention is just because sometimes we go through these books quite quickly. But I loved Serena's compassion, and I love that they made Xandar kind of a dick. And I thought that was kind of clever characterization because even today, I'll, I mean, Xandar has got his fans, but a lot of people don't really like Xandar. So I kind of like that they've given you a character reason to dislike him because to be fair, Xandar's kind of always been a little bit of a cipher, not even a cipher. He's just kind of just always just been there. Um, He's never really had much of character other than what you put in him. So when they give you this little moment to, that sort of speaks of his character, speaks to his whole vibe, you're like, oh, he's actually kind of a dick. Even by Dreadnought standards, he's kind of a dick. And Serena is actually not as bad because she was like, no, we have to protect our family kind of thing. I like that. I thought that was cool. It was cool to have at least one of the Dreadnoughts be protected. And it's cool <laughs> that it's one of the leaders that cares about them like that, which, you know, I think it's a good thing. I think even when you're a bunch of badasses, having some compassion is a good thing. Well, yeah, anyway. I think they're very, very well established. Generally, the connections that the they they as a biker gang as have as a family, mm. you know, like that's what keeps them connected, despite them all being a bunch of you know delinquents. Is that in generally speaking, they are a family that stays together um, because of their delinquency. Um, but it is nice that kind of contrast between the two characters. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic issue. I really enjoyed them mm. establishing who Cobra Commander is going forward. Um, awesome. I'm very excited to see what comes next. Um, and yeah, issue five is coming out. Yeah, uh, we still have issue five of uh, Duke to go. Um, mm. And then we... Super excited to see what Destro miniseries and Scarlet miniseries does. Yeah, I'm, I'm top marks for this one. Sweet. Top marks. Top marks meaning you're giving it five out of five. Hell yeah, yeah my dude. Absolutely. I'm yeah. going to give it four out of five because there was a rock that looked like Putin. I'm joking. <laughs> like, 
I'm going to give it five out of five. I just thought that'd be funny to say. I just hope I didn't upset anybody who happens to like Putin. But, um, Ooh, but Steve's yeah, not dude, saying anything, so I guess he's fine one. with it. <laughs> yeah, it was a great the reason one, I'm not man. saying anything, guys, is I have nothing but dirty audio for you. <laughs> found a piece oh, of that he's playing the x Men song. Very cool. <laughs> I've got. I've. You guys remember that video I sent you guys of of um. Banshee. Of course, playing on on. Banshee. That's why he's and playing it. That's why he's playing it. Good people, what you think of my new pickups? Oh, Ellie, Ellie, I got so jealous of that one. Hey, thanks for the solo. Um, so yeah, I got Sky Patrol figures most recently at a local vintage store. This oh, is hell yeah. All good Sky this Patrol figures. Steven's like, I want them now. <laughs> I'm kidding, bro. What do you I'm think kidding. of this guy, dude? <laughs> I love him. That's, that for me, that's the cherry on the cake for me. Like, that's the one. I, I kind of saved him for last because that's, well, like, that's where I want to get him. I want to get Airborne. So, yeah. Like, I had not realized my... this about the lift ticket sculpt, but he can't really bring his, his arm close to his side. That's his. Ugh. Oh yeah, my son's dying. He <laughs> can probably do it with his left hand. And it's totally true of the lift ticket sculpt as well. So it's true of mm. uh, not Franklin Tall Tree Airborne. Oh, uh, fun fact: Airborne is a medic. Just so infantryman and medic, meaning you know he kind of is another established uh, medic in the GI Joe team. You can't get enough. Oh, of very those. cool. Stalker, uh, lifeline, doc, yeah. well, doc, more of a doctor, medics, um, uh, Falcon, Falcon's a medic, so so is Airborne, and it's a great head sculpt, but topped by Static Line. <laughs> My goodness, oh, you like guys. you like Static Line more? I love Static Line. Oh, I bought it here. Head, Love that here. We, we could get him locally oh, yeah. on pigs. We could get him locally because he's the only member of Sky Patrol who got single carded release outside of Sky Patrol. It was a European and other territories kind of exclusive. But we could get Static Line. And I just think that he takes that backstop mold and makes it unrecognizable. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of the Sky Patrol guys are unrecognizable, but like. Backstop only exists to sit in the persuader and be forgotten. This gives yeah, it but not like Wild Ball. It's not a, he's more <laughs> exciting. Um, I bought Static Line when I saw one a peg in Dion's because it said Sky Patrol on his card. And I was like, what? And then he had the chrome parachute and I was like, what? Times two. <laughs> so I will say this though. What the hell is his weapon? Yeah. You can unplug the middle part to obviously be his handgun. Oh, you know boy, this, right? You. I the seller tried selling it to me without the, the plug-in thing, and he also had like a part slot on eBay. I was like, um, Whoa, I've noticed the gun is distance. in your part slot. Can I can I filch that? And he was like, Yeah, okay, sure. Um, oh, but I've the I've been server was complete. He plays I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh, bro. With modern glasses, <laughs> um, static lines sort of cling on batleth could be a drone, you know, little yeah hovering i kind of like it being the tray gun. you know it's like a little tray gun you know put your tray in upright kill position <laughs> put it around his waist what should i say i seriously always thought that it was as a spoon killer in the comments suggests the the decapitator like he held it in the opposite direction and he like threw it like a scythe or something or he chopped people's heads off um, I really didn't realize that he held it in the opposite direction. <laughs> Having the real conversations here. Well, He's guys, here. it's a, it's it's not um it's Daddy, not uncommon to make that Daddy. that that judgment earlier. One second, um, because behind me on my door, I have a poster, and in that poster, they have the Sky Patrol guys, and on that poster, Static Line has his weapon facing forward like a claw. Exactly, that's wow. probably. So it's like always it that that way. Way. whoever styled that photograph very good. was wrong. What, what, well, well, they were using it like Jaws of Death or Jaws, yeah. <laughs> Jaws of Life. Jaws of Life. You know, like, a, a <laughs> like they thought they looked Jaws at this, of death. This, this accessory and they figured actually the business end is the claw side. So help, have him hold it so that he can use it like a melee weapon. 
up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Moonlight says, oh no, Spoon Killer says, it's canon. So, yes. Yeah. Agreed. There you go. The claw. Very Something good. Thing. Claw. Nice one. Another bit of new shit, and I'm sorry we didn't say this up front, but the agenda moved very swiftly um, past all our talking points. Mike the Hunter. Can we have yes, a moment? Yes, I wanted to say. His movie, Bazooka, um, it has a surtitle. Hi. I'm blanking on it now. Bazooka, a G.I. Joe movie. Um... <laughs> there you go. Really on the nose. But guys, it is available. It is a paid production. So drop this guy some Patreon money if you want access to it. But we have watched it. And it's he a... gave us the chance to watch it. Um, it's so out and out brave. It's absolutely, it's a lot of fun. You can check out a trailer on his channel. He also released the first scene on his channel as well before you do um, decide if you do want to um, pay to watch the movie. But I, even though, yes, we were given the opportunity to watch it for free, I would definitely pay to watch this. Um, it is a full-length film. It's two hours long. Um, it has... Not sponsored. Uh, not sponsored at all. He, he, he gave it to us. He was like, check it out. You know, let us know. Um and it's it's fantastic. It's a full-on story. You get to see Bazooka is put into a situation where he, um, not to give obviously a lot away, but the movie opens. He, they're they they're attacked. He he's put in a situation where maybe he might not be able to be a GI Joe anymore, and he's given time off, and he has to um, kind of like rediscover himself and like who he is as a GI Joe essentially. Um, and he goes road tripping, and a lot of crazy shit happens. A good there. idea. Um. It's 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 fun. Uh, it's not just on full on action. Um, uh, you get some cool character moments, and I can, <laughs> Mike's impressions are absolutely incredible. Like he voices basically the entire cast. Some of the voices are done by his daughter. I believe one of the voices is by his his wife or his partner as well. Um, and it's absolutely incredible. His his voice impressions are amazing. Um, one of the characters, I think it's. Um, Rikondo, I think it's Rikondo. He sounds like he's made him sound exactly like Jason Statham. Like you hear this and you're like, wait a minute. Did you pay Jason Statham to do this voice? Because it sounds so good. I got Jim Godfrey, bro. Because Jason Statham <laughs> sounds like Jim Godfrey. It's Just not as bad as absolutely incredible. And speaking of action scenes, his action is so varied. Like I think while we have chosen obviously to focus because our love is three and three quarter inch, um, his his main focus on his channel has always been classified. So this is a classified movie. And as I'm watching his movie, I realized there is a lot you can actually do with classified figures, especially in um, when you actually set them up properly. You can get a lot of um, movement and a lot of um, not still frames, but like starting out action thing. You can kind of get a lot of very dynamic posing and, and, um, action out of out of these figures and say nothing of the fact that mike's fight choreography is very <laughs> so good varied. like i first thought he was a stunt coordinator when i saw his films because yeah. i was like this guy knows how to stage combat for camera and make it look good mm. and make it look real yeah because um, we we've, we've discussed at least one of his other productions with him, which i think is the previous part of this mm. ongoing like huge story that he does um it was set in Hong Kong, I think it was, wasn't it? And it had Destro yeah. in it. Yeah, it was Kamakura. Um, uh, it was Kamakura, yes, yes, yes. And he, there is kind of like an overarching story. So this is the next part in Mike's like overarching story. Um, so you kind of get to see like what happened to a certain object um, that he, a MacGuffin that he set up in, in the previous film that he did. Um, absolutely so much fun. And this is a compliment in a good way. His action is a lot like um, Michael Bay and like Zack Snyder's movies, where he kind of uses very cool slow motion effects to kind of like, and you really feel the <laughs> impact. There's directors who should be action directors. Yeah. Yes. You I know, agree. when they actually do action, it's so good. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking out the trailer, checking out the first scene. They're both on, on his channel, Mike the Hunter 203. I'm sure we will link his channel down below. Um, and probably a direct link to the trailer as well. Absolutely worth checking out. And thanks, Mike, for giving us the opportunity to watch it. Um, huge props. Like, huge, huge, huge props. I just think and it's also, astounding that something like this can even exist. Yeah, I don't think Bazooka's uh, ever had a finer moment. It's the whole package. Uh, yeah. Let me just, I mean, without giving away anything, this is feature length. This is a two-hour yeah, production. Dude, it's two hours long. 
you can pop some popcorn and get through the entire bowl. <laughs> you know, this is a, a meaningful contribution to not only um, G.I. Joe play motion films in general, but like to the character of Bazooka. Who knew? Mm. But he's compelling. Um, it, it, yeah, we're at a wow. wonderful place in our hobby where something like this exists. I had to pinch myself. I'm like, I'm watching toys right now. And this is a guy yeah. who makes films with his toys but this is yeah while he's out there hunting for toys he's, he's 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 playing with his toys as well which is something we've always said go out and play with your toys not to and diminish it's cool the that, like you know, shot to shot he's putting in so much blood sweat and tears i mean he does I, so much stuff that i wish he, i knew how to do you know exactly i approach this from like a filmmaking point of view it's uh, in in certain instances i mean a lot of the time i'm really just just a vanilla viewer, like just like astounded, agogged at at at, um, at what I'm seeing. But there are times mm. when I'm like, okay, how did he do that? Let me break it down. Like the the amount of layering of work, shot to shot to shot. I uh, I can't believe I'm watching the efforts of one man working alone in his spare time to produce this thing. It's Epic. it's fantastic so, um there's your hard sell guys um it is i believe ten dollars not to put you up for anything but i think it's ten dollars worth it um no for sure i mean that's just, some love. he's a family I man he that's the price of a, of a cinema ticket i think and then you get to see a cool gi joe movie you also so you get, get to, to support Joe's um, cool shit. you also get to support the person not a corporation which is always a yeah. good thing no absolutely so, <clears throat> you want to see more of these yeah. This is the way we do it. We support. Yeah, for sure. I hope he does a making of. I would absolutely watch a making of. I'm sure he will. Maybe he'll do it as like a special feature or something. I'm sure he will. He should. Uh, he absolutely should. Guys, on the topic, you guys mentioned uh, voice acting and voice work. Uh, Rob, just um, for Comic Con uh, Cape Town, mm -hmm. uh, there is a lady by the name of Veronica Taylor. Who yes, the does, voice of uh, voices for a lot of characters. Wait, not Pikachu. Yes, she did, um, Scarlet she did from Sigma Six. And ah. she did Sailor um, Sailor Pluto from Sailor Moon, and also April O'Neil from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That one, the early two thousands one. Heck yeah! Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. We're very lucky to have Veronica uh, here in South Absolutely. Africa. She's a fantastic, fantastic human being. I've had the pleasure of having a conversation with her, and yeah, so um, so lucky. I'm jealous because. It would be awesome <laughs> to be down in Cape Town just to meet Andrew Koji and to hang out with Veronica again. And yeah, so to all of our South well, African I... Book Force members, have fun. Yeah, have an absolute blast. And I'll definitely beguile everyone with hopefully many stories in episode 325 of G.I. Joe Book when we uh, do our live chat again. I kind of want to send my Andrew Koji Storm Shadow to you now to get it signed. <laughs> And you know, I'm like oh, not yeah. into that kind of thing at all. So Dirty milk water. Real small. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, Rob, I think that's did you us. Get anything new? That is. I didn't oh, get no, anything new. No, so no, we're all no. good. We're all oh, so my good. My wife's about to leave the house. Deposit. With the boy in her arms. Boop, 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 boop. No, Congratulations. You have a child. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Sad boy. Mom is going to work. Thanks to everyone joining us in the chats, and thanks so much to the incredible guys who keep us uh, afloat, keep us going, yes. keep us alive, keep us uh, absolutely uh, in the we going, got... keep us alive, the, the lights on. To all our fantastic patrons, thank you to patrons, the Bergforce, Yes, <laughs> to the Bergforce Also, in welcome, welcome to our new newest member. And I see my board didn't upload. But it's Big Danny Cool. Thank you so much Big Danny for, cool. for supporting Absolutely. this awesomeness thank you. that we do. So, yeah. Um, Incredible man. Thank you very much. Hell and, yeah. Uh, Love you guys. Cool, yeah. And uh, if you support. enjoy us, um, you can even check out <laughs> our incredible t-shirts oh, no. on Teespring uh, with, with amazing G.I. Joe inspired designs created by the, Link in the amazing description below. artistic uh, deadly pencils up above here um really cool good quality that, that comes to you i hopefully fairly fast i don't know i'll have to try that i'll Rob, have to try it Rob up is not overselling it apparently oh no no, no <laughs> thanks no, to everyone no. joining us live in the chats i see yes thank you to everyone 
Frostbite G.I. Joe Repro has snuck in in the 11th hour. He's happy to catch oh, us yeah. live at long last. Uh, yeah, we're painfully he's early. Sneaky, yeah, yeah, he's been in and out. In <laughs> um, but and also, guys, and then just, uh, I suppose, on the way out of the door, let's uh, just remember that uh, thank you, HCC. Um, if you've watched us and you managed to get this far, thank you so much for all the years of content, dude. I know we said it all up front, but in the spirit of guys like HCC and in the spirit of what um, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 was trying to do, let's make sure that we get together and talk about things that we like and not get together about things we don't like. So, you know, and we love G.I. Joe, we love toys, and we hate the new Transformers 1 movie, and that is why we all talk about <laughs> you hate the trailer. Yeah, you hate the trailer. Me, I'm... Um... I'm undecided, but I know this guy. We'll, we'll this guy see what happens. <laughs> you we'll hate the trailer too? Oh dear. Well, but you well do there love, we go. You do love gummies. You love gummies, right? Oh, gummy gummies. Everyone the loves gummies. Gummies in the cinema. Gummy. Oh, gu at least the gummies had a higher budget. Oh, oh Steven's yeah. Steven's trying to bribe his son into enjoying Transformers. It's amazing. One. There you go. You Whoa. Okay. Yo, Joe Berg, everyone. Thanks for uh, putting up with my 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 distracted state. More Joe, but, less oh, drama. Yeah. Like that, Frostbite. It's my life now. Hell yeah. Berg, Berg, Berg. Berg, 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 Berg,